I think he was quite brilliant. I mean, reflecting on his whole career, quite starting over and songs like that, even right at the end, absolutely fantastic. Fantastic, beautiful changes, lovely sort of subtle way, just totally unique, effortless way of, of taking a very simple idea and, and just complicating it just enough. Uh, lovely, absolutely brilliant. Our life together is so precious. We were just so driven creatively. We just wanted to make dreams come true. I mean, it's ironic that the song Sweet Dreams is really was. It's still, it's, it's bizarre. People cover it constantly. There's something about that song that seems to capture people's imagination now. I mean, years and years later. And it was alluding to our own dreams and our own motivation, you know. Sweet dreams are made. I remember that so well. We were sitting in a cab and we were in the, in the chart, to the sort of the countdown on the radio was there. And we were, I think we got in the chart when it was uh, 11 or something. And, and we sort of, oh no, it's not the next one. Maybe it's the next one. I thought, oh damn, it's gone out of the chart. And then it ended up on the number one. It was this <laughs> crazy feeling. Very. It sends chills up your spine the first time you hear it. It has that Mac the Knife feel, you know, when you were, first time you heard Mac the Knife, I remember when Bob Dylan talked in Chronicles, in his book Chronicles, about when he used to go to see Three Penny Opera and how it changed his life. Well, when I was a kid and I was in college, I heard Three Penny Opera for the first time when I was in college, and it did the same thing to me. As I sat there watching the marvelous spectacle. To have, you know, people say that we were so good in terms of all the creme de la creme of, of the music was that that's quite an achievement. So I think it sort of injected some new fuel in, into our bodies, you know. Anybody would love that, you know. We all need that. One day in my home in London, the telephone rang. My mother came in and said, it's Frank Sinatra. So I took a phone and I said, hello. And he said, hi, doll. Would you like to go out to dinner? And I said, oh, hoping I didn't sound too eager. Uh, yes, Mr. Sinatra. He said, call me, call me Francis. He said, ah, uh, Mickey, come on over, sit right here. He pulled the chair over. And then his wife got up and said, well, Frank, there's not enough room. And his wife says, your girlfriend can sit over here with the, the, the drivers and the bodyguards. And I said, well, then I'll sit over there too. And Frank goes, no, 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 we'll make room. He was a stand-up, old-school gentleman. Yet I get a kick. Out of you.